Hello, my name's Mark Higgins from UMETSAT, here to bring you this October's weather as seen from our satellites. October tends to be the month where we start to see some of the big autumn storms coming through. And we'll see a couple of those this month. We'll start to see some heavy rain, some of the first big snowfall events of the season, as well as some really quite nice periods. We start the month with quite settled weather across Western Central Europe, with plenty of fog occurring some of the early mornings, causing a lot of flight delays. And you can see that in this image with the white low level cloud that moves very, very slowly, dissipating through the day. Again, we've got the nighttime infrared images, which shows you the coldest clouds in white. And then during the daytime, you've got the full color representation where the coldest clouds are shown in cyan, the warmer clouds shown in white, and you'll see the land in green and browns. You'll be able to see the vegetation changes through the month. Meteorologists, of course, they're working day and night, and we always have a view on what the atmosphere is doing. So again, you can see some of the early morning fog in Central Europe here, an Atlantic system moving very slowly over the eastern UK. Behind that system, you'll see some of these smaller convective clouds, a sort of cellular looking structure in the colder air that follows the frontal system. So as we move into onto the fifth, this system here coming in off the Atlantic, so plenty of moisture, bringing really quite high rain to Ireland at this point. And as that system keeps going, it'll bring more and more rain to most of Europe. That system keeps on progressing. And by the time we get into the morning of the sixth and then in onto the seventh as well, that same system bringing a lot of rain, this time much recorded in the south of France. Now in the northern western parts of Europe, you'll see these big frontal systems moving through. There are still some convective rainfall events, these sort of uh, heat-driven events that occur in the southern parts of Europe. So you'll see them in particularly Spain and southern Italy. And you'll see those are the things, the frontal systems might trigger them, might really help them to happen. And you'll see these kind of rapid build-ups of cloud, which can lead to very uh, gusty surface conditions, but also, of course, a lot of rain. Where those persist in the night, you'll see this uh, localized strong white signal, so a very high cold cloud, that will then dissipate overnight. Compared to other times of years, these low pressure systems you see in the Atlantic very strongly define these swirling structures. So the low pressure is much, much deeper um, in the winter and we end up with much bigger storms covering large parts of the Atlantic and when they come in, large parts of Europe. And they also have these very strongly defined curving structures. So here on the 9th, you'll see some really strong convection in North Italy over the Alps there, bringing plenty of rain. Frontal structures moving in across Germany, Sweden, through to Denmark. And you'll see some of that structure at night. You'll see the persistence of the convective storms over North Italy, the Alpine storm system there, even there at night on the 9th to the 10th. You'll see in this pattern there's quite a, a defined high pressure that sits over most of Eastern Europe out towards Turkey. So a lot less storm systems, there's less heat, so less of the convection that we would have seen earlier on during the year. And you'll see that, say, quite a lot of fog in the mornings on the Black Sea there. Just sometimes in that fog, you'll see small trails, small lines, and those will be um, ship trails. So the trails of ships as they pass through some of that fog.
Again, another system coming in across the Atlantic. Again, as this system comes towards the mountains, it triggers off some convection. This is on the 12th. And that convection is going to lead to some very, very strong localized flooding in North Italy. We have a case study on that on the UMETSAT website if you'd like to see more about that particular weather event. You can see that at night, just those really strong clouds over Northern Italy. Still visible on the morning of the 13th. So this is bringing that really intense rain. While this was all ongoing, there was a very, very large storm building over the Atlantic. And you can just see on the western edge of the screen, so the eastern Atlantic, that storm coming in on the morning of the 14th. Very, very large storm. That storm brought some really significant snowfall to Iceland and pretty much filled the space between Ireland and Greenland. So very easy to see from the satellite pictures. As that storm was moving in towards Iceland, uh, it created another low pressure just north of Iceland, which led to some hurricane force winds between Iceland and Greenland. Again, we've got a case study on our website if you're interested in looking at that particular storm. At the same time, there was Hurricane Gonzalo, which was in the Caribbean. Now in a few days time we'll see that come over to Europe and that will be another storm. It's a storm that goes through what's called extratropical transition. It happens to a couple of Atlantic cyclones every year where they pass through the Caribbean towards the Atlantic seaboard of the United States, travel a little bit northwards and then get caught by the jet stream and then travel across as winter storms towards Europe. Here on the 16th, you can see the effects of that big storm. So this isn't yet Gonzalo, but that big storm coming in brings some quite heavy rainfall and big storms across Europe. On the 16th, Sweden saw some of its worst rain of the month. So on the 17th, again, another low pressure system that's following Gonzalo coming in, bringing rain on the 18th to the UK, Scandinavia, Northern Germany. We start to see here some really quite mild temperatures across western and northern areas of Europe. One place in the Netherlands recorded a temperature of 23.4 degrees on the 18th. Here on the 19th, we see a, a storm system. We can just see the edge of it in the screen on the southwestern corner. This is a very, very strong storm that's actually centered over Tenerife. That brought an incredibly large amount of uh, rain to Tenerife and caused some really quite uh, damaging local flooding. Again, there's a case study on the website if you're interested in looking at that one. So as we move into the 20th and the 21st, that's when we start to see Gonzalo arriving, bringing its rain across the UK and then into Germany and Scandinavia. So bringing some really quite gusty conditions and a lot of heavy rain. It's not a cyclone when it reaches us, but that storm still has a lot of energy. It travels with immense speed across the Atlantic. It's driven by the jet stream, and you can just see the speed with which it travels across Europe. It gets slowed down as it hits the land. That's the friction between the Earth and the atmosphere. And it brings quite a large amount of rain and a lot of weather. You'll now start to see some areas during the daytime where there is cyan that doesn't move. So that's indicating snow on the ground. You'll see that in some of the eastern mountains at this point.
So now we're entering a period of some quite uh, varied conditions as we look across Europe. Strong northerly flows are coming down from the north, so in Estonia we're seeing minus 11 degrees, whilst in Spain, in some parts of the Iberian Peninsula, we're starting to see 35 degrees. So that real contrast as we look across Europe. In the centre there, a lot of low-lying cloud with some fog. And right in the centre of Europe now, that system, that uh, high pressure there just persists. So you're seeing that low cloud and fog in the centre of Europe there, with low pressure to the north and to the south. In the south, you're still seeing some of those convective storms at night, and you can see that in the white clouds there. As you can see on the 25th, you can see quite significant amounts of snowfall have now arrived across Eastern Europe, moving across the Ukraine and into the Alps. As we come towards the end of the month, we're seeing a lot of rain. Northern Norway recorded 152 millimetres in a 24-hour period from the 27th through to the 28th. That's an incredibly large amount of rainfall for such a comparatively short period of time. Quite a mixed weather pattern across Europe as we come towards the end of the month. Some low cloud and fog in some areas and quite intense rainfall being seen in others. And we're starting to see the first snowfall of the year. In general, that was a very normal October. We start to see some of these large storms that move across during this time of the year. But we also see some of those very, very mild periods, some really quite nice, almost summery days. So quite a mixed end to the summer and a energetic start to autumn coming into winter.